This is chapter four, part one. It's about displaying and summarizing quantitative data. In this first video, we're gonna look at dot plots and histograms. First of all, to review, quantitative data is numerical data that you get from measuring things and it normally has units. And here are three examples. Another example would be um, heights of students. So the simplest way to display numerical data or quantitative data is with the dot plot. So this is a dot plot of heights of students. It's important that you label the axes and the scale clearly. So here's the label for the axis and then the numbers here are the scale. So you have two things there, a label and a scale. Dot plots are good for displaying small amounts of data. However, when you have a larger amount of data, a histogram would be a better choice. So um, histograms are similar to bar charts. Here's an example. Um, but they are specifically for quantitative data rather than categorical data. As with bar charts, the possible values of the variable are plotted on the horizontal axis and the frequencies are expressed as the heights of the bars. However, the bars in a histogram must touch, indicating that we are ne not leaving any spaces and indicating that the bars cannot be moved around into a different order. Since this data is quantitative, there are no natural categories to place the data. So in this case, we will define our own categories called classes or bins. There's no perfect way to create bins, but bins should always be the same length, they should never overlap, and there should not be any gaps. Ideally, when you're done making your histogram, you should have between four and ten bins that start and end at convenient values. So if we were to take this set, this dot plot, and turn it into a histogram, we can choose to make our bin widths two inches wide. So we just mark every two inches across here. And you notice on this mark, this last one I made, 64 is right on the line. So then you have to decide if a number falls exactly on the line, does it go into the lower bin or the upper bin? And convention tells us if it falls on a line, it goes into the upper bin. So there was another one that's going in the upper bin. And there's another one that goes in the upper bin. And you divide it like so. Once you have it divided, you count the number of dots in each bin, and then the number of dots becomes the frequency or the height of the bar. So that's how this histogram was made. When making histograms, make sure you label the axes and the scale. Label and scale. The vertical axis should always start with zero. The bars in a histogram should touch. And um, that's about it. So then, the relative frequency histogram. So we're looking again at our histogram of heights of students. If we were to take a histogram and turn it into a relative frequency histogram, we would just change the scale on the y-axis from frequency to relative frequency, which is percentages. So there we have the same histogram just with percentages instead of frequencies. Okay, note, a common mistake is to make a histogram by using one bar for each observation where the height of the bar represents the value of the variable instead of the number of observations in that bin. Um, so for example, if we were doing heights of students, we would do, you know, 64, well, instead of doing 64 there, we would just do a bar that goes up to 64, and that would be one person. If you have another person that's 64, they get a bar like this, and then taller people have taller bars. This is not how you make a histogram. So um, just take note of that. If you go to this website, rossmanchance.com slash applets, there is an application there where you can look at histograms and you can change the bin width. And by changing the bin width, you will get various um, dramatically different looking histograms from that.